بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه تسليما كثيرا أما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله تبارك وتعالى وخير الهدى هدى رسول الله محمد بن عبد الله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وشر الأمور محتثاتها وكل محتثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار This topic that the brothers gave to me about what Allah Azza wa Jalla has described in the Quran in a number of ayat as the qalbun salim the healthy heart, the pure heart and also some kalam about the other types of hearts that the Quran has mentioned like from the ayahs that the brother mentioned where Allah asked the question, أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنْ تَخْشَى قُلُوبَهُمْ مِنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Hasn't the time come for the people to become afraid as a result of what has been revealed by Allah? Hasn't the time come for their hearts to become afraid as a result of what has come? After looking at the schedule, the kalam that was given today was kalam about the Jannah, the kalam about the Nar, the kalam about the fitna of a Dajjal, and issues like that. And so, when the Quran is being recited and being read, it is the Qalbun Salim, the pure heart, that's going to not compete with the Quran. Even if the person doesn't understand the words, he's going to remain silent and give respect to the Quran. That's one of the characteristics and the descriptions of the pure heart. Allah Ta'ala mentioned concerning Yawmul Qiyamah, concerning this pure heart, when he mentioned in the Quran a number of ayat that we want to deal with. But before that, we should know as Muslims, as we navigate through this hayat of the dunya, that the heart is an extremely important and integral part of our existence. Every Muslim has the religious responsibility to take care of his or her heart, to nurture it. The Prophet told the people, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna fil jasadi mudra Ida salahat salah al jasadu kulluhu wa ida fasadat fasad al jasadu kulluhu ala wa hiya qalbu. Verily inside of the body of a person is a morsel of flesh. If it is pure, if it is wholesome, and if it is good, then the rest of the body is going to be good. It's going to have an impact upon his tongue, his eyes, his ears, his limbs, the way he thinks, the way he behaves. He said, and if that morsel of flesh is no good, is facet, is corrupt, then the rest of the body is going to be corrupt. He said, verily, that muscle flesh is the heart. That heart, if you were to separate it from your body right now and you were to physically place it on this table, is still going to be pumping by itself. It has an impact and an effect on the rest of the heart, that, on the rest of the body. The heart is the commander in chief and the limbs are the soldiers of the heart. Your tongue is going to do what's inside of that heart and so forth and so on. So that goes to show the importance of the heart. From the importance of the heart is the fact that it is the place of the taqwa and the iman. He told us, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam, at-taqwa ha huna wa ashara ila qalbihi thalatha maratin. He said that taqwa, at-taqwa, al-iman, faith, fear in Allah is right here. And he illustrated in front of the people. And he started pointing to the people, showing them it's right here in your heart, showing the importance of the heart. 
The Arabic word for heart, as you most of you know, is the qalb. And the Prophet said it, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, about it, innama summi al-qalbu qalban li taqallubihi. The heart is called the heart. It's called the qalb because it changes back and forth, goes back and forth. Today, he's a kafir. Tomorrow, he's a Muslim. Today, he's on the sunnah. Tomorrow, he's on innovation. Today, he's not grateful. Tomorrow, he's shakir. Today, he has a good attitude and a good disposition. Tomorrow, he's depressed and he's bugging out. The heart is like that. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam mentioned about the reality of everybody's heart. Inna qalooba bani adam kullaha bayna asabi al-rahman yuqallibuha kayfi yasha. All of the hearts of Adam's children, all of them, are between the two fingers of ar-Rahman in a way that Allah knows its reality, in a way that befits his majesty. Everybody's heart is like that. And he changes their hearts the way he wants to change them. Why is it that this guy over here, he likes mustard, but he doesn't like mayonnaise. That one over there, he likes mayonnaise, but he doesn't like mustard. This one over there is crazy about his wife. That one over there, he hates his wife. And that one over there is tolerant, and that and so forth and so on. It's because the hearts of the people are between the two fingers of, Ar of Allah Azza wa Jal. He makes people behave and feel and think the way he wants them to do. So the heart is extremely important. From the great favors of Allah is to have a heart that is salim, a qalb that is salim. Allah Azza wa Jal, he mentioned in the Quran, Yawma la yanfa'u malun wa la bunun illa man ata Allah bi qalbin salim. Yawm al qiyamah, on that day, there will be no benefit. There will be no benefit concerning the people's money and their children. He can bring all the children to the table that he wants. He can bring all of the money to the table that he wants. Yawm al qiyamah, it's not going to be of any benefit except the one who brings a qalbin salim. He has a good heart. Allah described Ibrahim, sallallahu alayhi the khalil of Allah azza wa jal. He was talking about Nuh first, and then he mentioned something about Ibrahim. He said, sallallahu tabarak wa ta'ala min shi'atihi la Ibrahim. If ja'a rabbuhu bi qalbin salim. And from the family of Nuh was Ibrahim. When he came to his Lord with a qalb salim. What is the qalb salim? The qalb salim that we should all strive to attain and to obtain and develop our hearts upon it. And just, just not leave ourselves like that. It is the heart that has been blessed with the ni'mah of al-inshirah. There's a surah in the Quran called al-inshirah. The expansion. Allah asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, أَلَمْ نَشْرَحْ لَكَ sadrak As a ni'mah, ya Muhammad, didn't we open up your heart for you to make you tolerant to these people who are Bedouins giving you trouble, beating you up, lying on you, giving you all these problems? You're sincere, you're intelligent, you're articulate, you're bringing to them that which will give them life and they're repaying your ihsan with asa'a. They're being bad and we opened up your breasts. Physically, when you were a child, we opened up your breasts and took your heart out and cleaned it and prepared you for nubuwa. When he was a young boy, Jibril came, opened up his heart, took his heart out, opened his chest, took his heart, heart out. And then he took from the heart of the Nabi a black string. And he said to the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, هذا حظ الشيطان منك. This is the portion that was inside of you that a shaitan had. Jibril cleaned his heart and put it back inside of his chest to make him prepared for a nabuwa. So from the child, time he was a child, he never did anything wrong where Quraysh could say to him, hey, we remember you were smoking cigarettes. We remember you used to do crack. We remember you used to kill people. We remember you used to lie. He lived his whole life after having his heart expanded, having his heart cleaned out, where they weren't able to repel anything that he was saying in Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So physically it was opened in preparation for a nabuwa. And later on when he became a Nabi, and Allah Ta'ala took him from Mecca, 
to Beit al maqdis from Beit al maqdis to the seven heavens and beyond, to the Sidrat al-Muntaha, his heart was open in preparation for that trip. Al-Inshirah, that's a ni'mah from Allah. The man who's married, he has to have inshirah. He has to have a breast that is open to be able to tolerate his wife, to tolerate his children. She has to have that. It's a ni'mah from Allah. When Allah was going to send Musa to Fir'aun, he made the dua, Rabbi shrah li sadri, wahlul uqtatan min nisani, yafqahu qawli. Oh my Lord, give me the expansion of my breast. I have to deal with this guy right here. This guy who said that he's Allah and he's think, he thinks that he's the man nobody could talk to him to be able to deal with something. That's from the good heart. Allah mentioned in the Quran, فَمَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَهْدِيَهُ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرُهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ If Allah wants to guide someone, if Allah wants someone's hidayah, He expands his breast and He allows him to embrace Islam. How many people do we know? They're not here today. We're not the best people in the world. But inshallah, we're not the worst people in the world as well. There are some people who are out there who are acting like animals. Allah Ta'ala put it inside the breast and the minds and the intellect of the people here to make an effort to come to this place to try to get some benefit to be far away from those things that bring upon the anger of Allah. So, the qalbun salim, it is the qalb that's healthy. It has a tawheed inside of it. It loves Allah. It loves Rasulullah. It loves Al-Jannah. And it thinks about Al-Jannah. Those things that Allah Azza loves, that heart loves it. Those things that Allah hates, that heart hates it. It is a heart that is full with Al-Hidayah. It's full with the Nur. It loves the recitation of the Quran and all of the remembrance of Allah. It's time for Salat. The dhikr of Allah. It's not going to lag behind and just sit and don't go. Play it off. The people don't know. Just play it off. Make the people think that she's not praying at that particular time. The qalb al salim is going to get up and it's going to pray. It's going to make the companion, the one who owns it, is going to pray. Allah Ta'ala mentioned this indication. Ayat of the Quran. Allah bi dhikrillahi tatma inna al qulub. By the remembrance of Allah, the hearts, they become tranquil with sakina. He said in the Quran in describing the believers, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانَ وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ Verily the true believers, the real believers, are those people who when the ayat of Allah are read to them, their hearts become trembling, they become fearful from that dhikr of Allah. And when the ayat are read to them, it increases them in iman. And they totally, absolutely rely on Allah Azza wa Jal. That's the qalbun salim. It loves Allah Azza wa Jal. It loves the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam. It is a, a, a heart that it is predisposed to hating those things that Allah hates. It doesn't want to hear ghiba. It doesn't want to participate in namima. It doesn't want to waste time. It doesn't want to talk about things that it doesn't understand and doesn't know and it's not its business. It's in a perpetual effort of trying to reach a higher stage, to reach Allah Azza wa Jal. The Qalbun Salim. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in an authentic hadith described the condition of the people of the earth. And he said, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, O Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, inna lillahi. Aniyatan min ahl al ardi wa aniyatu rabbikum qulubu ibadihi salihin wa ahabbuhum ilayhi al yanuhum wa araquhum. Verily, Allah, your Lord, He has vessels that are in the earth. Aniyah, vessels. And the vessels that Allah owns that are in the earth are the hearts of His righteous servants. Those vessels that He pours in it, rahma, to deal with the people. As Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned and described the Nabi, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضٍ غَلِيذَ الْقَلْبِ لَمْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ It was a rahmah, ya Muhammad, that you were easy with Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali and Ukasha and your wives. It was, it was a ni'mah. Those Bedouins, those Shabab, those people were doing and saying crazy things around you. It was a rahmah from Allah that you were easy with them. If your heart would have been rough and tough, they would have dispersed from you. 
If you're mutashaddid with your wife, it's not going to work. Our children in this environment, we want our children to practice the religion. We want them to memorize the Quran. We want them not to have boyfriends and girlfriends. We want them to grow up to be decent people. If you force that on them and you're always forcing that, it's not going to work. So from the vessels of Allah Azza wa are those aniya or those vessels that are the righteous people in the earth, Allah Azza wa he puts rahmah in their hearts. And he said the most beloved of those vessels are the ones that are easy. They're layin, hayin. They're easy with the people. And they have a rik. They're soft. They're kind. They're gentle. And with that being the case, the best of the hearts were the hearts of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet's heart. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he was from the ulama of the companions. And we have a lot of statements from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud probably more than any other companion when it comes to the minhaj al-Salafi, how to deal with issues, those wise statements. If you were to gather up everything that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, they far outweigh and far outstretch what every other companion said. One of the reasons for that is Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he went to Al-Iraq, the place of the fitna, to this very day. It's a place of fitna and mashakil. All of the innovation was in Iraq. So Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was seeing the situation, and as a result of that, he was given tawjihat and irshad, advising his students in the community. In the regard of these hearts, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, and although this is his statement, it has the ruling of coming from the Nabi because he couldn't say this from his own mind. In Allah nadara fi qulub al-ibad fawajada qalba Muhammadin khair qulub al-ibad fastafahu li nafsihi wa abta'adhuhu bi risalatihi thumma nadara Allah ta'ala fi qulub al-ibad ba'da qalbi Muhammadin fawajada khair qulub al-ibad qulub ashabihi fajalahum wuzara nabiyihi yuqatilun ala dinihi Allah looked at the hearts of the servants during the time of the Nabi. He looked in the earth and he looked at all of the hearts of Beni Adam. He found the best heart of the children of Adam at that time was the heart of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Allah made him Mustafa li nafsi. He chose him for himself. He made the Prophet his Khalil. He made the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the Sayyid of Beni Adam, the Khatam of the Anbiya and the Rasul. Salawatullahi wa salamu wa alayhi. The first one who's going to go into Jannah. The one who's going to get the shafa'at al-kubra. People from this ummah would deserve to be put in that hellfire because of all of what they did. But because they loved him. And they had a qalbin salim for an example. They loved him. He will get involved and make intercession and they will be exempt. They won't even go to the hellfire. Some people will be in the hellfire and they're supposed to burn some more. The Nabi will get involved, bi idhnillah. He'll be able to get him out of the hellfire. So the shahid in the point, Allah Azza wa Jal chose his heart because it was the best heart. He said, and then after that, Allah looked at the hearts of the people after the Nabi and he found that the best hearts of the people was the heart of his companions. So Allah made those companions the wazirs, the ministers of the Nabi, and they fought and they spread his religion. And that goes to show, just as Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Mustafa, he is Mukhtar, divinely chosen, his companions were the same way. They were divinely chosen. If it was left up to us, the people in this room, you people be responsible for spreading Islam. You people be responsible for showing the Arab community what a good picture is concerning our religion. You people pray, wear hijab, show what Allah is mentioning in the Quran, then there will be a lot of problems. But when he chose those companions, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali, and Ukash, and the rest of those people, they were divinely chosen, and as a result of that, they had no problem with hesitating or not hesitating with making the necessary sacrifices. So that companion, Al-Irbad ibn Sariya, to prove this point about the hearts of the companions, after the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sat with them, he started giving them an exhortation, started telling them about ayat of the Quran, started telling them about Yawm Al-Qiyamah is close, started telling them that I'm about to die. Wa'adhanna Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa'idhatan baligatan 
وَجِلَتْ مِنْهَا الْقُلُوبَ وَذَرَفَتْ مِنْهَا الْعُيُونَ The Nabi, he started to give us a talk that made our hearts tremble and it caused our eyes to shed tears. We say, Ya Rasulullah, it is as if you're giving us a farewell speech, as if you're going to leave us. You're talking like you're about to die. What do you tell us to do? And then the Nabi went on to tell them some points of advice. Take the sunnah, respect the companions, obey the leaders, all of those issues that here. You're going to hear a lot of ikhtilaf. Those of you who live a long time, you're going to hear a lot of people saying a lot of things. Do this, do that. So the point was that when the companions, radiallahu anhum, who were the vessels in the earth, when they used to hear the Nabi speak, it meant something to them. It affected their hearts. They had the heart that was wholesome. It loved for Allah, hated for Allah, it gave for Allah, and it refused to give for Allah. Someone came to the companion to marry his daughter, and the man was not very attractive. He was ugly according to what they thought, the way the people think. He was ugly. Julaybib, radiallahu anhu, the good heart is the heart that says, I'm going to marry you to my daughter because you appear to be a religious person, a practicing person. You appear to be a decent person. The qalb salim, that's how it is. It gives for Allah and it doesn't give for Allah. Someone comes to marry his daughter, he doesn't care what tribe he comes from. That's not something that causes him not to marry. It's not the first box that he checks. He says, I'm not giving you my daughter because you don't pray. I'm not giving you my daughter because you're doing this or you're not doing that. Something that's from the skills of the deen. The qalb salim. The opposite of that, the opposite of that is the heart that is dead. That's the heart of the kafir or the heart of the munafiq, the hypocrite. The heart of the innovator. The one who doesn't have any nur, doesn't have any light, doesn't know what it's doing. It doesn't care when the Quran is being recited. If given the choice, it would choose a hip-hop artist and what he has to say or what she has to say over the kalam of Allah. It's the bad heart. No light, no guidance. Allah Ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, أَوَمَنْ كَانَ مَيْتًا فَأَحْيَيْنَاهُ وَجَعَلْنَ لَهُ نُورٌ يَمْشِي بِهِ فِي النَّاسِ كَمَنْ مَثَلُهُ فِي الظُّرُمَاتِ لَيْسَ بِخَارِجٍ مِنْهَا that's a rhetorical question. The answer is clearly, no, they're not the same. Did you not see the one who we gave him life? He was dead. We gave him life. And in addition to that, we gave him a light by which he can walk and navigate himself with the people. He knows what he's doing. He's, right, he's walking on the path, the sirat al-mustaqim. Is his example like the one who is in perpetual darkness, compounded darkness in dhulumat, and he'll never come out of that dhulumat because he has a dead heart. Kafir, munafiq, innovator. He wants to get close to Allah by innovation. And he loves that, the way it feels and the way it tastes. He gets a dress, a man, he gets a dress. He puts one of those kufis on his head and he starts turning around and spinning around for one hour, spinning around. And he says, oh, I became one with the dunya. That's a qalb that's marid, saqeen. You say to him, Abdullah, Abdullah, what are you doing? He said, this is the dhikr of Allah. He believes that. Making dua to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He believes he loves the Nabi by doing that. That's a heart that's dead. Smoking crack, smoking weed, not praying, not practicing kuffar. Allah Ta'ala mentioned about their hearts. Many, many, many ayat of the Quran. Qulubuhum. Their hearts, the hearts that, of the people that are dead, kuffar and other than them, their hearts are munkira. They reject and they deny the existence of Allah. Although his ayat are there every single day. 20 years ago, 25 years ago, 30 years ago, 45 years ago, 48, 50 years ago, that person was just a sperm and here he is, sitting, understanding, talking, communicating, having children, going to and fro. This Maghrib prayer that was just completed, the sunset and that phenomenon that took place and it happens every day is a sign and an indication. The one that caused this day to pass us by yesterday, 
the day before that and the day before that, he made us go to sleep and he woke us back up. It's a sign. It's a sign of Yomul Qiyama. It's another chance you have. Make Tawbah. It's another chance. Say La ilaha illallah. It's another chance. But those people who have the dead hearts, they live every day and they don't look at that. People don't look at that. Signs galore all around. They don't look at that. When they love, they love for other than Allah. They love for themselves. As a result of that, they compromise. They compromise. I love her not for Allah. I love her for myself. So we're going to go to the hotel and we're going to do what we're going to do. I love him and I love him for my own desires. Not for Allah. My heart is dead. As a result of that, I compromise. I don't let my parents know what's going on. I degrade myself and allow myself to become another notch in his belt. He conquered another one. When they give, they give according to their hawa, according to their desires. When they prevent and they don't give, it's in accordance to their desires. What, what pleases them? What pleases the people around them? That's the dead heart. It can't reflect. It can't contemplate. Allah mentioned in the Quran about that dead heart. فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَ الْأَبْصَارُ وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَ الْقُلُوبَ الَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ it's not the eyes in the people's heads that are blind, but it's the hearts that are blind. The man will come Yom al he had the ability to see. And in Al-Islam, the one who is blind is not handicapped in this religion. The one who is blind is not handicapped. The one who doesn't have arms is not handicapped in the deen. The one who doesn't have feet, he's in a wheelchair, he's not handicapped. Someone who is possessed, he's not a handicap. They have special needs. The blind one, the handicapped one in our religion is the one who Allah has given him limbs, given her eyes, and they don't use it. They don't use it. Allah Ta'ala mentioned, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهَا فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى قَالَ رَبِّ لِمَا حَشَرْتِنِي أَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتَ بَصِيرًا قَالَ كَذَارِكَ أَتَتْكَ آيَاتُنَا فَنَسِيتَهَا وَكَذَارِكَ الْيَوْمْ تُنْسَى يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَة Anyone who turns away from our dhikr, the Qur'an, the sunnah, the haq, al-Islam, anyone who turns away from it and he rejects it, Yom al qiyam is going to be raised up blind. He's going to say, oh my Lord, why did you raise me up blind, Yom al qiyam I used to could see in the dunya, I had eyes I could see. Allah Ta'ala will say, because my ayat came to you, you forgot about them, you didn't pay attention to them. So as a result of that, today you're going to be raised up blind, blind. أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنِ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Why don't they do not, why, they do, why don't they contemplate the Qur'an? Why don't they read the Qur'an and contemplate the message of the Qur'an? Do they have locks over their hearts? Do they have locks over their heart that they don't want to read the Qur'an? That's the heart that is saqeem, the opposite of the heart that is the heart that is set. that's the heart that is sick and it's in opposition to the heart that is healthy and salim the one with tawheed the one with hidayah and nur this dead heart you have to beware of being with a person who's like that because when you hang out with people who have dead hearts you're playing with fire the Nabi from his du'a sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min qalbin la yakhsha. I seek refuge in you from a heart that doesn't fear. Clearly the Nabi is not talking about his own heart. He has a heart that has khashya. So why would he be making du'a, I seek refuge in you from my heart being like that? It could mean that, but the stronger meaning is, I seek refuge in you from a heart, someone who has a heart that doesn't have any khashya. He's marrying my daughter and he doesn't have any khashya. He doesn't take her as an amana in my absence. If I was there, he's not going to treat my daughter like that. If I was there, they were living with me, he's not going to treat my daughter like that. He's going to respect her because he's going to be scared of me. But in my absence, he takes my daughter to another town, he's living somewhere else, he does whatever he wants to do with her. I seek refuge in Allah from that individual. The Nabi used to say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so he can't be your companion. That individual can't be your companion. The third type of heart, khwani, from the many hearts of the Quran, is that heart that's in between the two that we just mentioned. It's the heart, it's the heart that is 
not Salim, and it's the heart that is not dead, but it's the one that has some sicknesses. It loves Allah, it loves the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it thinks about the hereafter, but it does some good and it does some bad. It makes mistakes here and there. And the month of Ramadan, it gives back in control and it gets it in check. And his iman starts soaring with the birds. But then after that, for one reason or another, he or she, they start doing other things. They're decent people, but they make mistakes. Not everybody is the same in this deen. Allah Ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, ثُمَّ أَوْرَثْنَا الْكِتَابَ الَّذِينَ اسْتَفَيْنَا مِنْ عِبَادِنَا فَمِنْهُمْ ظَالِمٌ لِنَّفْسِهِ وَمِنْهُمْ مُقْتَصَدٌ وَمِنْهُمْ سَابِقٌ بِالْخَيْرَاتِ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ We gave this book to those people from our servants. We divinely gave them the book. And they were of three categories of people. From them, the believers were those people who they were oppressive to themselves. They made a lot of mistakes. From them were the muqtasad. They were in the beginning, in the middle. And from them were the people who were uppermost. The people in the first row. The people who are really serious students. They're making a lot of efforts. People who make halal, halal, haram, haram. Those real decent people. And I don't know, everybody's not the same. The sick heart. He's back and forth. He listens to his desires. He follows his desires. But with some nasiha, he comes to his senses with good people around him, she comes to her senses and they make mistakes, some sicknesses. Concerning those, the noob, the Prophet Wasallam showed us that we cannot be judgmental to people because everybody, they have their issues. مَا مِنْ عَبْدٍ إِلَّا وَلَهُ ذَنْبٌ هُوَ يَعْتَادُهُ وَالْفَيْنَةَ بَعْدَ الْفَيْنَةَ أو ذَنْبٌ هُوَ مَقِيمٌ عَلَيْهِ لَا يُفَارِقُهُ حَتَّى يُفَارِقَ الدُّنْيَا there's not a single person except that he has a sin, she has a sin that they keep doing from time to time. They're going to keep doing it from time to time. And they're not going to leave that sin, some people, until they leave this dunya. They're going to keep smoking cigarettes until they die. They're just addicted. They're going to keep making ghibah until they die. They're going to keep having a bad attitude in the marriage until they die. Just some people are like that. But that doesn't mean they go outside of Al-Islam. The young man came. He said, Ya Rasulullah, give me permission to make zina. I'm a young man. I got this fitna. My shahwa is taking over me. I can't handle it anymore. I'm coming to you with sincerity. I want to make zina. That was a sign of sincerity on his part. The fact that he would say that in front of all of the people. The fact that he would come to the Nibi. He could have went and did it. He could have found anyone from the Kuffar. He could have found a lady that was willing to do that with him. For money or for free. But he was sincere. He came. He didn't want to be held accountable by Allah. So he said, Ya Rasul, allow me to do it. The Prophet said to the boy, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, You want that to be done to your mother? He said, A'udhu Billahi. Ja'alani la fada'aka ya Rasulullah. May Allah make me your ransom. I don't want anybody to do that to my moms. He said, The people as well. They don't want that to be done to their mothers as well. So the Nabi took the boy and he made dua. He said to Allah in his dua, Allahumma ghfir dhamba wa tahir qalba wa hassan farjahu. Oh Allah, forgive him for his sin. That shahwa that he has, he has to fast. He has to lower his gaze. He has to struggle and make jihad with it. He can't just do anything. He can't come and ask to make zina, not to mention acting upon it. Oh Allah, forgive him for that sin and purify his heart. That man was a companion, but he had a, a disease at that moment. And also purify his private part, the Nabi says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They said about that boy after that dua, he never looked at women. He didn't have that issue anymore. So I'm not saying that that companion was sick. What I'm saying is that that young boy goes to show. People, they have hearts that are not salim totally. They have to rectify the issue. That companion used to drink khamr. And he kept being brought. And he was flogged for, drink, for drinking khamr over and over. He had iman. It's a sick heart. A sick heart. So what we have to do ikhwani, concerning these issues is... We have to develop ourselves in trying to rectify our affair. We have to try to our best 
to follow the kitab and the sunnah, to be decent Muslims, the best of our ability. Allah mentioned in the Quran, Ya ayu ladina amin, istajibu lillahi wa lirrasul, idha da'akum lima yuhyikum, wa alamu anna allaha yuhulu bayna mar'i wa qalbihi. Oh you believe, answer the call of Allah and his messenger when they invite you to that which will give you life. And you should know that Allah comes between a man and his heart. Allah comes between a man and his heart, between a layla and her heart. Yesterday after my presentation, after Dhuha time, before the presentation, they told me, some guy in the audience, he's thinking about Islam. He's a non-Muslim, he wants to talk to you. After the presentation, brother Uthman, Somali brother brought him. Talk to him a little bit. You ready to be a Muslim? He said, I'm ready to be a Muslim. He just accepted Islam. Two days ago, three days ago, four days ago, he's a kafir. He came here yesterday, and if nothing else happened in this conference, I feel that's a success right there. That one person that I know of became a Muslim. Brother Jermaine, Jermaine, and the brothers gave him love. Allah came between his heart and what he wanted. The dua and the salat of al-istakhara. Part of that dua is we say, Allahumma in kunta ta'lam inna hadha al-amr. شَرُّ لِي فِي دِينِي وَمَعَاشِي وَآقِبَةِ أَمْرِي فَاصْرِفْهُ عَنِّي وَاصْرِفْنِي عَنْهُ ثُمَّ اقْدِرْ لِي الْخَيْرِ هَيْثُ مَا كُنْتُ Oh Allah, this thing that I want to do, if you know that it's bad for me, in my deen, in my dunya, in my hereafter, then take it away from me and take me away from it. I want to do it. Sounds like a good idea to me. But I make that istikhara and I ask Allah, take it away from me and take me away from it. You may like something, it's not good for you. But if you try to practice the religion, Allah becomes and makes a partition between you and that thing that's bad for you. Or he'll release that thing and make it open and make it easy for you. But one thing we can't afford to do is we can't afford to have one foot over here and one foot over there and think that that's okay. Practicing al-Islam and getting high, you can't do that. Practicing al-Islam and not praying. You can't do that. Allah Ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, مَا جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لِرَجُلُ مِنْ قَلْبَيْنِ فِي جَوْفِهِ Allah hasn't given any person two hearts in his one body. You're going to worship Isa with this heart, and you're going to worship Allah with that heart. He didn't do that. He gave everybody one heart, one heart. And the other thing is, concerning these hearts that are sick and being easy with making mistakes and not making tawbah and not being around people who help you to remember Allah this is what Allah mentioned in the Quran about the people who have sick hearts the one who has the qalb salim he loves the recitation of the Quran when people give him advice don't become angry he says oh, okay don't be stingy you're a stingy person he says Astaghfirullah okay he doesn't have any problem when he's reminded of Allah, he's reminded about Yawm Al-Qiyamah, Qalb Salim, the one that's dead, he's not trying to hear any of that. That middle one, he has problems. That's most people's situation. إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى Allah mentioned, وَإِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِ آيَاتُنَا قَالَ أَسَاتِرُ الْأَوَّلِينَ People who have the sick heart, and kuffar as well, when the ayat of Allah are read to them, he says, those are just tales of the ancients. Well, I'm not trying to hear that stuff. There's that stuff is tales of the ancient. Isa, he was born without a mother, without a father. You, you believe that? The hearts of the people between the two fingers of Ar-Rahman, you believe that? You believe that a man was in the stomach and the belly of a whale? You believe that? Those stories, Rumpelstiltskin, Goldilocks, and the seven dwarfs, and them dead, we don't believe in that stuff. Those are stories of the ancients. Allah Ta'ala mentioned, Kalla bal rana ala qulubihim. Those people, they have a ran. The Nabi explained that darkness, and it's a big mushkila. And Imam Ahmed and his musnad, and the authority of Hudayfa radiallahu anhu and other than him. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam turadu al-quloob ala al-fitan ardu al-hasir udan uda 
the hearts of the people will be exposed to trials and tribulations. And those trials and tribulations are going to be closely affecting them on a daily basis, all during their lives. All the time. Any heart, when the fitna comes, it embraces it. It's not only standing up in the fitna, but it's running after it. It's being proactive. Whatever the fitna is, he's right there in the middle of the mix. Anyone who does that, he makes that sin, he makes that mistake, there will be a blackness that goes over his heart. And any heart that when the fitna or the trial or the mistake or the sin comes, he says no. She says no. I'm not going to do that. When they take that position, a whiteness is placed over the heart. Until the person has one of two hearts. Abiyat, mithlu safa, fala tudurruhu al fitnu, madamit is samawatu al ar. One heart is the heart that is white and pure like the driven snow. It's white. Because every time something happened, he repelled it. Making riba, I'm not trying to hear that. I got something better to do. Telling tales, I don't have time for that. You want to have a relationship, I don't have time for that. The conversations that people have with the internet, other than that, person says, I'm not going to do that. They make jihad, not to fall into issues. Their heart becomes white every time they push it away. Becomes white, white, until the fitna sins won't harm them. As long as the heaven and the earth, it remains. And then he said about the other heart, وَالْآخِرْ أَسْوَدَ مُرْبَادٍ كَالْكُوزْ مُجَخِّيًا لَا يَعْرِفُ مَعْرُوفًا وَلَا يُنْكِرُ مُنْكَرًا إِلَّا مَا أُشْرِبَ مِنْ هَوَا The other heart is a black heart. Drinks khamr, the blackness comes. Drinks it some more, more blackness comes. Smoke that marijuana, the blackness comes. Whatever the sin is, more and more. Every day you do the thing, it becomes black and black and black and black until it becomes like the black vessel that they used to drink from. The black vessel. And he won't have the ability, and she won't have the ability to distinguish between right and wrong. They get high, they don't know the difference between right and wrong. They don't realize having multiple relationships with multiple men is not acceptable because she's drinking khamr for an example. So the heart that is a heart that is sick, it's not the heart that is necessarily the heart of the disbeliever, it's the heart of the regular person who's making mistakes. Those people in Somalia who call themselves the Shabab and who blow people up and kill people, that's a sick heart. The heart of a Muslim, I'm talking about a Muslim who believes that he can take a bomb and place a bomb somewhere and indiscriminately blow innocent people up. That's a heart that's marid. It's sick. It doesn't have the ability to distinguish what's right and wrong. That is actually looked at as being something that's okay by which stretch of the imagination. Which religion says that? That's an extreme case that we can see in our very lives. In our very lives. We don't want to see kofar taking advantage of our resources and our riches. We don't want Ethiopians in our land. We don't want Kenyans in our land. We don't want American in our land. We don't want kofar doing things to us. We don't want that. But that's one thing. Another thing is for a Muslim to say, I want to solve this problem, and the way I'm going to solve the problem is I'm going to sink my country into more turmoil and anarchy, anarchy by killing people. That's a sick heart. So the shahid of all of that kalam, ikhwani, the point of all of that kalam is, religiously in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everybody has a responsibility, everybody. No one is perfect. Perfection is only from Allah and is only with Allah. We have this responsibility to purify our hearts. And the way that the heart is purified, first and foremost, is by not making shit with Allah. Making your worship, your existence, solely and only for Allah, and don't fall into that innovations and shit in any shape, form, or fashion. The prayers that we make with sincerity, making jihad, to get up for fajr and being diligent and upon our prayer, 
that is an issue that will cause a person to develop a heart that is salim. Those different ibadat, taking the time out to go to Umrah, to perform Umrah, to see the Kaaba, make tawaf around the Kaaba, all of the ibadat, reading the book of Allah Azawajal and listening to the dhikr of Allah is a way that Allah mentioned that the hearts, they become tranquil. As for the one who turns away from the dhikr and he replaces the dhikr of Allah and the ibadat with man-made issues, whether they come from himself or other than that, music or whatever, then the music clearly will cause the heart to die. That's what those companions or those ulama of al-Islam used to say. Al-Imam Ahmed, Al-Imam Abu Hanifa, Al-Imam Malik. They said that listening to music, it plants the seed of hypocrisy in a person's heart. The Nabi, he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Iyaka wa kathrat al-dahak, fa inna al-dahak yumit al-qalb. Beware of laughing too much. Because when you laugh and laugh and laugh, it will cause your heart to die. So if a person puts himself in a situation where he just wants to sit and listen to comedians, and they're lying, and they're swearing and cursing, and they're being vulgar, and he listens, to, yes, that's entertaining. Eddie Murphy is a funny guy. That guy is funny. No doubt about that. You listen to that stuff, you want to you laugh at that stuff. But laughing at it will cause your heart to die. Because it is in contradiction to the goodness of Al-Islam. He's lying. He's swearing. He's saying things that are not acceptable. So the Nabi used to, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam, make the dua. Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Oh Allah, the one who turns the hearts, please, Establish my heart upon your deen. So making dua to Allah Azawajal to give you thabat, making dua to Allah Azawajal to give you a good heart, a pure heart, dua is from those weapons. We're going to stop now, inshallah, because in another minute or two minutes, we're going to have the adhan for Salatu Al Isha. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our qulub and to establish and to plant our feet firmly and our hearts firmly upon at tawheed and upon the sunnah and upon al islam subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik